Well, welcome to another Ford Model T video about this pile of junk, which fortunately doesn't look like that anymore. But there's me looking rather shocked that I had gone and done something stupid again. This looks a lot better though, doesn't it? This is when it was starting to run and finally I got it to this stage, which was uh, just a really nice feeling. But that was many years ago now, which is quite shocking. I've had lots of problems. I've had broken crankshaft, broken camshaft, all the issues that go along with it. But I finally built my uh, nice little boat tail speedster rear end there. And um, oh, that was about two years ago. <laughs> I literally had to wait a year for a crankshaft. And when it got here, it was bent. But anyhow, I've now got to the point where she's almost ready to run. And it's time to make the exhaust. And of course, it's going to be in stainless steel because that's what I do. So there's the exhaust I'm going to be using. This is an eBay special off of um, an MG MGA, I think it is. So it's already been on the car. Um, but what I did before is it just came out straight underneath the axle. Whereas now, with all this boat tail in the way, I don't really want the exhaust coming out there. I want it coming out the back here. I suddenly realized that this was in danger of running into the back axle over bumps. As the back axle's about here. So the pipe could easily have run into the spring or into the axle that's here. The axle's like here and the spring's here. So what I've done is I've welded on this little socket here and just taken out this angle. And that would give me the clearance over the top of the axle, but between the spring. So it will come up closer to the spring so that the axle can move up and down without hitting it. And then I've got this really cool stainless steel convoluted tube, which is really quite satisfying to move and bend around. It even pops out as well, and it just looks really cool. So I will run that on the end of that pipe, so it will go like that somewhere, and then up here into the end piece, which I'm going to make out of a piece of stainless. <clears throat> which I will run into this piece of perforated, so a piece of stainless steel stuck out, flush probably at the end, and that will sit there somewhere like that. But obviously not with the stainless steel sticking all the way out like that. And that should work quite nice. Just to add, I'm quite happy with this welding. I think that looks quite neat and tidy. Uh, I've just taken the top edge off this one, but there's no point doing that one. It was almost sacrilege to clean it too much, actually. It's got a nice colour tone to it and everything like that. The tick does work quite well, even getting into a fairly confined space like that. That's the advantage also of welding thick stainless to fairly thick stainless, is you can put a reasonable amount of power in and, you know, it just really runs nicely. Um, normally with stainless, you would blank off this end, blank off the other end and purge the inside with argon gas. Um, and then you wouldn't have, you know, any problems with the TIG on the other side. You wouldn't have any perforations or um, impurities. This, because it's so thick and it was actually sealed almost on the other end where I put it on because it fitted over the tube, it didn't need it anyway. And I, I don't purge the rear because what we do on these sorts of things isn't that uh, critical. You know, I've, for instance, all the welding here, you can't purge the other side, can you? Because you can't like fill the whole of this space with art, the whole of the space back here with argon. So you know you just weld that bit, and maybe on the other side it's a little bit not quite perfect, but in actual fact I've looked and it is. But um, you know it's just the way you have to weld things. So there's real you have to be realistic. But the, the real problem with purging back really comes when you've got thin tube and you need you need a really good weld, perfect all the way through. So this bit here isn't that great. What I've done is I've joined a very thin one and a half millimeter tube to two millimeter and the little collar that I had to put in here. So the trick with this always is you've got a lot of stainless here and very little stainless here. It's very easy to burn through. And there's a couple of bits where perhaps I've gone through slightly and I'm gonna have to grind them down or sand them down with a file or something like that. But generally I've got it okay so I, I was flicking from the very thick stuff to the thin stuff just gently into the thin stuff as gently as I could to not burn through this 
So I've put these bits of welded rod on each side as well. And that's going to support my perforated thing that's going to go over the top. So I'm going to have to grind them slightly so that this can slide all the way down here and go over the top. And then the cool thing is, is the heat and the exhaust will just slightly pass to this, which means it won't burn into my wood. So this is going to be a proper heat shield to reduce the possibility of burning into that wood. Now I've also got some titanium wrap up there. Well, I don't know what it is, it's carbon wrap. They call it titanium or something. But anyhow, to wrap the exhaust to stop the heat from passing from the flexible tube that's dangling down there into the base of the car. And one of the lovely things that's happened here is that welding these end bits, it's not the best TIG by the way, but as I say, I'm trying to not burn through and it's all covered up. It's definitely not falling off, I know that. But anyhow, one of the cool things about this is welding each side has caused distortion. And now the pipe on this end is oval. And you think, oh, you don't want it oval. Well, in actual fact, I just thought that will look nice. A bit of ovaling on the pipe as it comes out the back. You know, that's going to look a little bit nice. So it's a nice little, sometimes distortion can help you. If you plan ahead for it, you can actually help it, you know, make it work for you, which is good. All right, so this is the welding. I was just going through the holes and that seemed to be working well, but I don't think because this is one and a half millimeters and the rod is eight millimeters, you're trying to weld something very thin to something very thick and you can't get enough heat into that rod. So I wasn't comfortable, so I grinded a slot and then it was a real pig because then of course you're melting the eight and you're just, you know, getting into the eight, but this stuff's just burning back. So I've had to go and repair some of the holes a little bit. But with a pass of a thing, that should work. I mean, it, I think it's held good enough. It's never going to come off because obviously this is the bit that's, this is the bit that's bolted to the actual car and the pipe hangs in there so it doesn't pass the heat. So yeah, I used a thinner tube and welded onto a thicker tube here because I wanted the bigger bore because this is only inch and half I think maybe less and this is 45 millimeters so this is a lot bigger this is like inch and oh I can't do the calculation almost inch and three quarter you know so I wanted that I didn't want a bean can four inch like a boy racer but I just wanted to be a little bit more beefy ah, so getting there so I've been using this uh, nice cool stainless steel Quite satisfying stuff. Look at this. And then you can just sort of push it around like this, and it, it just feels very satisfying. This stuff. Nice stainless steel convoluted hose for the exhaust. And there is the exhaust set out the back like that. So she's still going to have this to go on here. I've got some oak that I'm going to have on here that's going to curve down on these brackets. So the oak will curve down like this and it will end way before the exhaust. And that will give this rounded edge to the bottom of the boat tail all the way along, all the way along. But that's the exhaust there. So she's, you know, all sort of in there on these bolts, holding good. It goes down here, then it goes to a convoluted hose, which I haven't wrapped yet, but I probably will and then to the standard box. And that's where I've got that real sort of kink up there so that I've got lots of suspension travel. And I have, you know, the suspension's got, oh, probably about eight to 10 centimeters travel there, right there, which I think is plenty. I mean, if I ever used that much and I think it would, uh, I'd be in trouble. So, and of course, if it does run up into that convoluted hose, it'll have a fairly soft stop rather than a, hard one so it'll just ding up the convoluted hose and then I'll know that I've got to do something else but yeah that's the exhaust running out here to here so I'm quite happy with so you always have this little stub bit stuck out and then the 
oak will start around about here and run down that way. Should look quite nice. And of course the, the end has ovaled slightly. So it's just slightly ovaled. It just has a nice little effect to it, I think. I'm quite happy with that. <clears throat> I think that'll do.